and welcome back to Divine Lady Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here for Crafting with Dee Dee's, episode two. back to the channel thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while I do some crafting so about a month ago I did the first episode of uh, crafting with DDs and I was working on the uh, EPP preparation so today I thought I'd pop in I've got a little bit of spare time and I thought I'd pop in and say hi and see how everybody was going and so I'm gonna keep working on this so I'm gonna work on some of the corners and um yeah, and get some more done because otherwise I won't get any done because <laughs> I haven't been uh, doing it on Fridays like I wanted to, but I'm here today and I'm going to do some. Whether I get a whole row finished or not, I don't know, and I start on my last one because I'm working on the corners at the moment. All right, so let me just get some business stuff out of the way first of all, and that is a welcome to anybody that is new here. And if this is the first time that you've been here, hopefully you enjoy what you see. Grab a craft of your choice and uh, sit back, relax, and I'm just going to prattle on and do some crafting and you'll be able to see what I'm getting up to. And if you're a returning viewer and you've yet to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it, and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. And as you can see behind me, I still have rubble everywhere. I am sorting out so much stuff at the moment that I have forgotten about. I've put away and then I've packed away because we we're doing the renos and all that sort of stuff. So I am pulling some stuff out and I'm thinking that I'm going to end up having a bit of a garage sale when the weather warms up and the rain goes away. So it'll probably be around, I don't know, September end of September, middle of October, something like that. I'm going to have a bit of a garage sale, but I thought that I would do a de-stash first of all, so that way you, the viewer, will have the opportunity to get hold of some of my stuff, because I have a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, in the next year or so, maybe two years, we will actually um, not be living here anymore in the um, in Kingaroy. We're going to be moving over to Nanango to a new premises. So I will be getting a brand new studio over there. So I don't want to take it all with me. <laughs> And just recently I decided that I wasn't going to have an online store anymore, only for my handmade stuff. And so, yeah, just to, um, I'm still in two minds. Like, do you know when you, you want to make a decision, but you're just being really indecisive and you don't know whether you should or not? So if you go to my website at the moment, you'll see that it's under maintenance. And that is because I am doing a bit of a stock take as well. And it's just taking me forever because I'm the only person that's doing it. So, um... Yeah, I've sort of got to the point where I'm not really sure whether I want to have an online store anymore for all the retail stuff because it takes a lot of my time and I'm finding more and more often than not that I'm not getting any crafting done because I'm doing stuff for the shop or I'm doing other stuff for other people. So I want to continue quilting for everybody and I want to continue making handmade stuff. But I don't need all the stuff for, for the shop, like all the notions and all that sort of stuff. So... I figured that I will, um, I've got all my rulers and all that sort of stuff, so that's not a problem, but I figured I will just have a massive garage sale and just clear out some stuff. And, uh, and when I, garage sale to me is like, you know, a yard sale or whatever you call it in the US. Um, other places, I don't know what they call it, like a, f I don't know, just a clear out and um, yeah. So I'm hoping that I can get it all together and I will just have a massive clean out and hopefully you get, you guys will get some bargains as well. So the things I wanna continue on with is all the cross stitch um, accessories that I've been making and whatnot. So I wanna continue on with them, although I haven't been making many of them either and I haven't done any dyeing whatsoever for fabric for quite some time. Um, but I wanna get more into that and I wanna, um, branch out into some more handmade stuff and not just be focused around bags, cross stitch, 
and quilting. So that's sort of the plan at the moment. Um, so yeah, so keep an eye out for that. I'll, I'll let you know on the channel when I'm going to have a clear out and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> My husband just looked at me, he goes, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. And even when I move, like I don't want to have a, I don't want to be mucking around and trying to keep a store open and move at all and all that sort of stuff so I'm just going to sort of stick with the cross stitch stuff which is all the floss and, and whatnot which none of is listed up and the it's mainly just people that know that I've got it send me messages and or I put kits together for people in either Cosmo or the DMC all right but we're here for crafting and that's sort of where I'm heading with that and so there is stuff everywhere and I've had a lot of fun this last couple of weeks because I found for fabric that I completely forgot I had and if you've been on the channel this week you would have seen that I made this basket with all the stuff in it that I'm using for my EP um, for my English paper piecing I can never verbalize EPP in a conversation I end up having to say English paper piecing so you can see it's got everything all the fabric that I need for the project all the bits and pieces that I've already cut, cut all the spare stuff the only thing it doesn't have is the 18 packets of little diamonds that we need so um yeah if you want to make a project but um basket like this it's super easy once you've um sewn the fabric together it's one piece and there's no turn like there's a bit of turning out when you put the lining and the um out of fabric together but it's essentially one piece that creates this little basket and it's not that little like as I said it's six and a half inches on the base so you can see there I can put both my hands under and it's quite a large basket um, and it holds everything and it's perfect but it's still compact enough for me to just pop it into a bag if I was going to a retreat or anything so go and check it out it's on the channel it was the um, how to make a, a simple um, flat bottom project fabric basket bit of a mouthful but it's there on <laughs> that if you just if you go to the home page on the channel and you go up to where um it's got a uh, home videos playlist community and all the rest of it there's a little search bar there and you can search my entire channel for anything that you're looking for because i often get a lot of questions from people going oh i can't find this or where is this or um i noticed that you had this and and that or they'll be in the um in the group and someone will mention it and then I'll get a message asking where it is. If you come to my channel and you go to the home page and you do a search in that, it will bring up everything. So if you put in fabric basket, it will bring up every fabric basket that I have made on the channel from the most popular. I think it goes from the most popular to the, or no, sorry, I've got it set up so it comes up with the latest release video. So that's something that you can um, keep an eye out for. All right. So as I said, we are here to do some stitching and I've got all my bits and pieces out, as you can see. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of stitching. I probably don't need that much thread. <laughs> all right, there we go. That's a bit better. And so I've only got... Um, I've only got two more pieces to put onto this one. So I've got... I'll just move this out of the way for a sec. So I've already done two and almost three. So you can see there that I've got um, I've got the pieces together. So these are my two bottom ones and now I'm working on the top ones. All right, so th this is the bottom of the quilt. So on the top ones, this one's at the top. And then this row here is at the bottom. All right, so I'm just going to pop them out of the way. I've got my cuppa. Hopefully you've got a cuppa. You've got the craft of your choice. And we're going to get some stitching done on this English paper piecing project because I have not put any time into this at all. All right, I'm going to have to swap my glasses out. Swap here, swap that. You've got to put the eyes on. And if you hear a bit of a racket in the background, I think there's some tree loppers down the end of the down the end of the street. So I could hear like all sorts of racket happening a bit earlier. And I can still somewhat hear a truck, but there was a lady down the road. One of her really old trees needs to come down. In the last storm, it was um, and it's very close to her house. So. So if you hear that, I do apologise. All right. 
So hopefully you can see what I'm working on. I've got a second camera now and that gives you a better idea of what's going on. So I'm just stitching them together and you can see here that I'm just doing a whip stitch. And I'm just taking a little bite of the fabric and I'm trying to put a stitch. It's not quite a quarter inch that I put a, a stitch, but that's sort of what I try to do. And there are many different ways of doing it. But the main thing that I focus on is I do not want to go through the little um, cardstock in there. So I want to go across the top of the cardstock. And um, yeah, I can hear the truck backing up now. Oh, there we go. That's got it out. That was a mission. All right. So what have else have I been up to? I haven't really been up to that much. I've I've been doing a lot of filming. I've got some awesome tutorials coming up on the channel, which is good. Um, I've just been really focusing on getting some content done. I haven't edited it at all, but I've filmed a lot. <laughs> We've got the magazines coming out soon too, which um, we've only got a couple of weeks before that comes out. So I've been doing a bit of that. Got paperwork to get out today for that, which is good. I'm looking forward to seeing um, the spring issue come together. We've got a slow stitching series starting up on the channel. So that will be where I just you know, doing some hand stitching, some hand embroidery, sort of in the same format as this. And um, you can come along and there'll be little projects to make that I'm going to be making and all that sort of stuff. So that's sort of another reason why I want to get away from the shop because I, it's just... It's just taking up way too much time. And then I've got all this stuff here. And there, I could just so utilize the space a lot better if I didn't have the online shop. And as I said, I still want to do the quilting and all that sort of stuff. So I'm looking forward to still doing that. But I really don't want to move all this. And I know it's a couple of years off and, and um, whatnot. But yeah, I just figured it's just time. You know, and I'm only a small shop too because I don't have the space. Like I can't, I don't always have the products that people are looking for and then people get upset that I don't have the stuff and, or it takes a while for me to get it. Like I can get my stuff, but you know, I've also got to wait for supplies to have it in stock and all that sort of thing. And I'm just, yeah, just sort of getting a bit over it. All right, so that's that row. Hopefully I've sewn this on the right way. And I've just um, used these to get all the pieces out of the way. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to bring that out. You can see here that I've just stitched this row here. And now I'm going to bring this up and stitch this one here. And then I'll continue on to there. All right, so just fold this in half. bit of a mission at times okay and then I'll just iron that like once I've finished putting all the pieces together you can see here I'm just folding it and sometimes the cardboard will pop out and I can just pop that back in and put a little bit of glue on that and then it won't come out all right so we'll get our little um so tight oh. And make sure my thread's in the right spot, not under the sew tight. <laughs> oh, the joys of being on camera. <laughs> Every little mistake gets shown. <laughs> All right. Okay. I think we're in the right spot now. All right. So I'm just going to make sure that all my pieces are lining up and the corners, there's no little hole or anything like that. to adjust that a little bit more. The little one just needs to come up just a touch. There we go. That's better. Oh. 
Yeah, so I've been finding all sorts of stuff under my long arm machine. Like I've got containers under there and like you don't always pull those containers out. And, you know, I've got into the habit ages ago of putting, um, you know, leftover fat quarters from bundles and whatnot into one container. But then I must have at some stage decided that I was going to put bundles of fabric in there too because... I found this that gorgeous bundle of um, fabric and I also found a cotton and steel bundle as well which I don't have out at the moment but oh it's I've had that for ages like I forgot all about it I picked it up from the fat quarter shop um it must have been in 2018 2017 maybe like it's been there for a while and I completely forgot about it so I've pulled that to the top of the pile and so you'll probably see uh, a few of these fabrics making an appearance on the um, channel over the coming weeks because I'll be making things with them no point in them sitting in the um, container doing nothing Brendan's been super busy with work as well. He's had a lot of trips to Brisbane. Car's broken down and Savannah got her peas, which was exciting. And she's been, it's quite funny actually, because she comes out and um, she goes, oh, I'm taking the car today. And I'm like, it's your car, honey. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> like, she goes, oh, I'm just letting you know. I'm like, that's fine. I'm, I'm glad that you're letting me know, and I appreciate that. I said, but how much or how little you drive your car actually has nothing to do with me whatsoever. That is a personal preference on your on your part. And she goes, I don't know. She goes, it just feels weird. <laughs> Look at it. I imagine it would be after being chauffeur driven around for the, be for the better part of 17 years. Um, <laughs> I can understand that. So yeah, she's um she's getting used to it. Her and her sister have got a, a friend, or her sister's got a friend that lives um quite a number of hours away from us, um about five and a half hours northwest of us, and um they very rarely get to see each other. And apparently she got hold of a puppy down here in Dolby, which is about uh, about an hour and a half from me, and um southwest of me and anyway she asked if we could um pick it up for it and drop it about two and a half hours northwest of us um this coming weekend we've got a long weekend this coming weekend and um but it just didn't work out because savannah had planned to do stuff and um and then narrowly's working on the monday and they're both working on the saturday so they couldn't exactly um go up and do that so um anyway we're going to have this little puppy i'll put him on camera because i'm going to have him during the day um or her actually and i think her name is going to be sadie that's if it all goes to it goes to plan and and we end up with her but um yeah i said to brendan i said oh we're going to have a visitor for a week he goes oh who <laughs> like because he was not feeling real well when i said it to him and he was like the last thing i want is visitors i'm like oh you really like him and he's like, who's coming to visit? And I'm like, a little puppy. And he's like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> he just, when he gets super tired and he's been in the drug a lot, he just gets very antisocial. So, yeah, so we're apparently going to have a little puppy um, here for a couple of days. And then it'll be going on a little trip um, up the road to um, Eiswald, which, as I said, is about two and a half hours from where we live. Um, northwest and um, yeah so it's going to be interesting having a little puppy around the house we haven't had puppies for a very long time here um, we've had kittens and such but no puppies because our yard's not set up to have dogs and um, so yeah I'm I've got the the morning duty because I get up early and we'll be I'll be taking it out for a walk. So by the time they get it, it'll be trained on the leash. And um, so I'm going to take it out for morning walks. And no doubt Brendan will become obsessed with it. He loves dogs. But as I said, we can't have a dog here because 
But we sort of decided a long time ago that we didn't want to have dogs because we had one on the Gold Coast and um, it was a little Staffordshire um, Terrier, Bull Terrier. And um, anyway, she um, became obsessed with Brendan and um, basically... Um, yeah, she became obsessed with Brendan and she wouldn't stay in the yard or anything like that. She kept jumping the fences and all that sort of stuff. So basically we decided a long time ago that until we were both going to be home and we weren't going to be working and um, our yards were set up for it, that we wouldn't get a dog because cats, they couldn't care less one way or another whether you're in the house or not. <laughs> They'll come and say hello to you when you get home and whatnot. As long as you give them food um, but as a rule they don't care <laughs> whereas a dog needs to have have you around and becomes obsessed and and all that sort of stuff so <laughs> we decided a long time ago that that's um we weren't gonna have a dog we had dogs I think the last actually the last time we had dogs Savannah would have been about two I think three nearly Harley was still only a baby. I was still carrying her around. And so, yeah. So he's very excited that this little puppy is going to be here for a visit. I don't know how excited I am. Because, well, I like puppies and they're cute and all the rest of it. Puppies make lots of mess. <laughs> so, yeah. And apparently Nerali is going to be, when she's home, she'll take care of it and play with it and all that sort of stuff. So, She's, she just wants to help her friend out. At least I, I wish I had a picture. I'll have to get Neralee to send me the picture, and when I um before I upload this, I'll I'll add a little picture of the um puppy and how cute it is. Although I didn't really like the way it was being held. <laughs> it's like <laughs> out to the to the camera. It's a bit weird. All right, this piece is almost in, and then we'll be on to our last piece in, and then I can start on the next set. So the next set that I'm going to do, it will be like this as well. And um, I'm hoping that you can see that okay. I'm sort of looking behind me because I've got this on my webcam, so I can look at my computer and I can see what's going on. Yeah, oh, I just, I look that way, and it's just stuff. There's just stuff everywhere. I've got boxes of stuff. And a lot of it is shop stuff, though. Like, it, the big boxes is shop stuff. And then I've got boxes of scrap, um, which I'm going to get the AccuQuilt cutter out, I think, and just cut up a whole heap of stuff into squares and get some containers and just start putting them in because it's just getting out of control. It's getting out of control down there. So yeah. Oh, that was tight. <laughs> All right, so that's that one in. You can see there, and I'll give that a really good press later. And I'm just checking that the it, bits and pieces have gone in properly. The good thing about these um, little um, sew tights uh, is they're like a built-in needle <laughs> minder, so I just put my needle on it, and I don't lose it then. Bit of a I think that's the cardboard's come out, yeah. That's what's happened there. There we go. I'll just get my glue pen and um, stick that back down. It's been a bit difficult. There we go. All right. So the last one to go in is this one here. So I'll flip that back over and... Line that up. Slide that under there. And I get it nice li nicely lined up. So I'm matching up my corners here and also here and all my um, edges as well to make sure that they're nice and even. And then it's not going to move now. And then I'm just going to in the seam because I'm here in the in the junction 
and I've got a, this to sew down here, what I'm going to do is I will just flip that over and then I'm just going to weave, like do a running stitch in that fingers are slippery today. Do a running stitch through that until I come down to the other corner and then I will start stitching. So I haven't gone through both sides. I've just gone through that um, seam allowance because when I put the all together, that's going to be, um, you won't be able to see it because that'll all be in underneath like the back of the quilt. So you won't have to worry about it. So now I can just, and this one here that's flapping around, I'll just, so it's out of the way, I'll just use one of these so tights and uh, put it there and then it's out of the way and then I can just work on this edge here and then when I get to here I'll make sure that's sewn together I'll take that one off and then flip it out and keep sewing it's really hard like I, I've, I've done um, for anybody that wants to know how to do this I've done a couple of videos where I've used hexagons and stuff like that but I did one called beginners uh, beginners uh, English paper piecing I think it was called it's a little little um, coaster that I did and we just worked with some one inch hexagons and we just sewed a little flower together and we put it on top and then we applied it on on top of the uh, backing fabric and so that was just a basic little flower um, that we did and but I couldn't get real close, so I'm hoping, and with the crafting with uh, DD's episodes, it's a, you, I'm using you a little bit as a guinea pig because I'm messing around with camera angles and stuff like that, and I can move this however I want. Um, it's just on a little, um, on a little tripod, and it's just right over my hands, and then I've got a light that. Um, is shining on over the top so it's um is illuminated a little bit better and that, that's half the battle with um crafting videos really is just getting it illuminated and you know everything in the right spot so you can see clearly and you know i don't always get it right there's some videos where you know i'll move back from the the bench and stuff like that but um hopefully this is okay and you can see okay um just makes it a little bit easier I don't know why I didn't think of it for the first one because it would have been so much easier for you to see um, but anyway it is what it is so, yeah. and it's good because all I'm doing is recording I'm recording this um, this camera here that you can see straight to my um, computer so I don't have to worry about space or anything which is really good it's all a process yeah, and trying to do everything on a shoestring budget as well because I've got a family and I've got a kid to get through uni you know as we all do we all have like well, not all of us but you know we all have our bills and and whatnot you know life expenses and all the rest of it no different than anybody else So the next time that I come on, I'll be, um, I'll probably end up just um, doing some of the little diamonds. So I'll show you them in a, just a second. I'll finish doing this one and then I'll show you what, what my next step is. Okay. All right. That's that. And I'll just get that corner. That one didn't. Oh, don't you just hate that? Uh, let's see if I can get this to. Yeah. So what happened is my thread got caught around the corner and I didn't see because you know too busy gas bagging. So what I'm doing here is I'm just. You can see I've got this loop. Okay, and there's the end of my thread. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to move these out of the way for a second, and I'm just going where my stitches are I'm just pulling it tight and this when I get to the next uh, one one of the last ones it should just it 
should now pull through. I started to nod it off, so. But anyway, we got there in the end. So when I get to these corners, I want to put a couple of extra stitches into there. So I'm going from corner of the hexagon to corner of the hexagon, and then I will just thread my needle through that and make it a little bit tighter. And this thread is just giving me grief today. So I'm going to actually finish that off and get another piece. There's a little bit of a unraveling on it. And it must have been just a piece that's rubbed up against something. So I've tightened that off. I'll get rid of these long bits. And there we go. Now I don't know what happened then. My light went off. All right, I'm just going to sit that there for a sec. Okay. Casper's playing around with the lights. All right, my thread had a little bit of a um, weirdness going on in it. It just wasn't quite right. So I've just decided to actually start a new thread and... Um, Whenever my thread gets a bit funny like that, I just, I'd just i much rather just start a new thread. Alright, so again we are going to thread that through and double it over. Don't necessarily have to double it over, so, um, depending on the thickness of the thread too, like I'm using a very fine thread so... I'm just doubling it over and that's what happened with the last one it sort of it had that little knot in it and it broke and it's just a little bit too thin to go through so I've got to the end and I'll finish that off which is okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take these out of the way and then start line that up So you see in there, I just slid the magnet, so you can see that little magnet. Oh, that's just the plate, and then that's the rest of it. So I just slide that under, and then once I've lined everything up, I can then just pop that on top, and then I know it's not going to move, and that's how I um, use them. Instead of trying to fight to get them on in the right place and all the rest of it, I just find it easier to do it. I can do it on my lap. I can do it on here. It's it, much of a muchness, really. Okay, so I'm starting a new thread so I'm going to stitch where I just finished off and I'm going to get this green one and the the white one there and I'm going to come through that and then I'm going to go into that dark blue one as well into the right into the corner of it okay so you can see you should be able to see just there there we go it's just focused for you so I've got those three butting up to one another and I've gone in there. So I will actually now go from the blue one to the green one and then bring it right down. Once. Twice. And then I will just slip my thread through there to make a little slip knot and then I'll go from the green to the light blue and do a little slip knot and then I'll go from the dark blue to the light blue because it's just the camera angle normally I'd go from the light blue to the dark but it doesn't matter much of the muchness and then I will secure that so that is now secured that little junction where all they, they all meet up together. And now I'll just keep going along and make sure that my thread doesn't get caught up on my hexagon.
So, um, as I said, I've got a uh, new series that is starting up called Slow Stitching. And so this will be a um, segment on the channel. And I'm not sure how often it's going to be happening, whether it's going to be, you know, every week or whether it'll be once a fortnight. It'll just flow. But it'll happen on a Saturday, so it'll be called Slow Stitching Saturday. And basically, we're going to do some projects together and we're going to... I don't know make some stuff but all by hand so we're going to go back to basics like right back to basics and um do some stuff by hand and talk about different things that i'm using and there'll be all sorts of stuff and i've got another um another craft that i'm looking at um doing at the moment and i'm just waiting for some books to come on the subject because i'm super interested in doing it so i'll be able to share that with you as well um and the slow stitching stuff will be, you know, like hand embroidery and all that sort of thing. We'll make some projects together. We'll probably do some English paper pacing because this is a slow stitching as well. Um, we'll make some little little um, items together and stuff like that. I've got a few things written down and, and I'm just nutting them out. So I'm not sure whether it's going to start this week or whether it'll be next week. But because I've got the magazine at the moment. So, but it is... Um, I've got all the plans written down and I'm getting supplies together and, and all that sort of stuff. So keep an eye out for that. That will go up on a Saturday and I'll make an announcement um, in the group as well to let everybody know so you can see it. And um, I might be able to, you know, have the cameras a little bit higher over, over certain things and we can just do some nice, slow, steady, you know, work on it over a couple of weeks or something like that. And um, we can do that together. I'm getting right into the, like at the moment, I'm really gravitating because my life is so fast paced. Like, as you know, I do a lot of stuff. And because it's so fast paced, I am I just want to, I just want to take a breath and I want to, like I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that at the moment I'm doing a lot of reading and that is taking me away from the screen. Of course, you know, then you've also got the the other problem of having um, books on your Kindle, which is on your screen, but it's a different light. It's it's definitely like I've got the, um, oh, what's it called? The Kindle Oasis. I've got that. And so the it's got a backlight in it, but it's almost like, you know the yellowy tinge of um, candlelight it's like that so when I and and I can bring the brightness right down so when I go to bed at night it's it's almost just like having a candle on while I'm reading because I, I bring it right down so my eyes don't get as fatigued when I'm um, reading on my Kindle so I do really like it like I really really enjoy um, reading on it and I read a lot faster on it too because and also you know, you get a book and the text is so small in it, you, you know, you've got to get your magnifiers out almost to read it. And it's got 900 pages like that. And it's just like, oh, really? So whereas on a Kindle, I can adjust if my eyes are a little bit fatigued because I've been quilting all day or I've been doing something else all day where it's fatigued my eyes, I can enlarge the print on it as well. And it makes it super easy. And I just seem to fly through books on that, which is not great for my you know my wallet <laughs> yeah so but anyway it is what it is and um yeah so i i really enjoy the the slowness the getting away from the the rat race so to speak so i've been um well if anybody's following me over on dusty book sniffers you know i've been reading a lot um of stuff and i haven't been doing much stitching but now i'm doing like i've about a happy medium and a lot of the books that I have got um, also I have um, an audio book with it so I can listen to the to the audio book but there's also something about reading the book of having that silence so no audio coming in no one talking to me the only voice I can hear is me reading in my head <laughs> you know like that just total disconnect from the um, digital world is absolutely brilliant and I'm absolutely loving it and 
even Brendan, like, because Brendan has something going at him all the time. So when he's in the truck, he's listening to audio books. Then the phone's ringing. Then he comes home because his hobby is TV. He loves TV. Um, that and cars, where I don't care about TV. Like, I'm here during the day, and he can come home at any time of the day, and the TV won't be on. Um, I've got a TV in my room, and I honestly cannot tell you the last time I turned it on. And um, so I, I've never liked TVs in the bedroom. Um, and because of my snoring so bad, Brendan and I have separate rooms. So he's got a TV in his room, and then the old TV's in my room. And I haven't even turned it on since he and I haven't been in the same. And my, my snoring is really, really bad, and I'm trying to lose a lot of weight to because that's what's caused it and so he has to drive and so we made the decision that we'd sleep in in separate bedrooms and I must say this is probably the secret to a happy marriage <laughs> our grandparents were onto something sleeping in separate beds and separate rooms they were onto something it wasn't because they didn't like each other it was because they liked each other that they wanted to continue liking each other so a lot of people go you sleep in separate rooms and like yeah it just works because he used to snore really really bad and he still does and then I still I didn't I didn't snore at all and then um if I was sick, I would snore, like I'd get a little bit of a rattle going. Um, but he was terrible. Like I, I used to have, the first time that we, when we first got married and the first time he had a really bad night of snoring, I got up because I had to get up to the kids the next day and I got up and went and slept on the lounge room. <sighs> Anybody would think I'd kicked his dog. <laughs> He was not impressed. And I just said to him, you know, it's nothing against you. I just had to get some sleep. I've got to deal with the kids all day. And um, he was going to work and, and all the rest of it. He was asleep. There was nothing wrong with his sleeping. And, um, yeah, so basically then I started snoring. And my snoring started when I started to put weight on and when my thyroid um, condition got worse. And basically... Um, there was nothing I could do about it. Like it, it is actually a side of like one of the symptoms you get from having no thyroid working. And so, um, which I did not know until I asked my doctor and she goes, Oh yeah, that's normal. I'm like, well, you told me that this was going to be a problem at some stage. Anyway, <laughs> um, that's beside the point. Anyway, um, after that happened and cause he's got to drive a truck now, it, it's, it's dangerous to, to drive. Anybody knows it's dangerous to drive when you're tired. So he's not going. I'm not going to get upset because we're not sleeping in the in the same room because of my snoring. And honestly, it works so well because I if I'm not tired and he's tired because he's you know been in the truck all day or he's you know moved forty cars today. When he comes home and he goes, you know what, I'm tired, I'm going to go to bed, he can go to bed and I don't have to worry about disturbing him or anything like that. Um, so I get to do a lot of reading at night where otherwise I probably wouldn't because the light would disturb him. And or I can do stitching, which is what I'm doing now. Like I read, watch a, a TV show with an hour or two with him in the evening when he's home and... Um, then at nine o'clock I can go to bed and if I'm not tired I can do an hour or two of stitching and then go to sleep and generally I have my phone like if I if I um, am doing stitching I'll listen to an audio book then um, but then there are other times where I'll sit there and all I listen to is the sound of the needle going through the thread because the house is quiet the street is quiet um, and where my bedroom is, like I can hear my neighbours, but at night when it's quiet, it's just, there's no street noise or anything like that, which is absolutely fabulous. And my light keeps going out and I don't know why. Although that's still pretty bright. Let me see how much brighter it is. Yeah, this keeps going out for some reason. So must have a timer on it. It's never bothered me before, but yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, so I get to do a little bit of that. So I've restructured, I've moved my, um, and I talked about this on my floss tube and stitch with me the other day. I've moved my um, frame into the bedroom, <laughs> although when you kick it <laughs> in the middle of the night, 
because <laughs> you've walked into your dark room <laughs> no light on. Yeah, no, that doesn't feel good at all so um <laughs> I've got it in there and it's it just I've just slid it down to the end of my bed when I go to sleep and when I want to stitch I just slide it up the side of my bed and um I can do some stitching for an hour or two so it means that I'm getting back into my stitching and floss tube is happening and yeah and I I think with my floss tube and I said this the other day like I I was gonna just do it like once a month or, or actually every two weeks but I just procrastinate too much like if I've got stuff I've got to get done, like this week I set my goals that I wanted to get a lot of filming done. So I wanted to get this month's um, sewing tutorials sorted, not necessarily edited, but at least filmed, because that takes a long time. Like what something that takes half an hour to make takes me three hours to make, you know, or because, you know, you, you bugger it up, say, or you've done something wrong, or you've missed a step, or you forgot to say the step. <laughs> is what I tend to do you know but it can take me a long time so you you guys see a 15, 15 minute or 30 minute video there sometimes can be up to three hours of raw footage um not always like it depends on the project but for instance the retreat bag so they see the retreat bags that you can see up there behind me um basically those retreat bags the one that I made on camera that what that was I think like it I think each video is an hour or something like that I can't remember now what they were um off the top of my head but there was they were they went for a substantial amount of time for each step and basically there was something like for off the top of my head and if I'm I don't have the the raw footage anymore I delete that once I've made the video but there was a good 36 or 46 hours of raw footage that I had to go through to edit to make those four videos. So you can imagine like, you know, the needle breaks while you're sewing or you stitch something in the wrong place or you've stitched it and then it hasn't stitched in the, like it hasn't caught up or it moved while you were sewing it. And <laughs> all these things happen and people don't realize that that's, you know, like at the moment, I have um, four videos there, and there's, including the basket one, which I've already edited, there was, I think I, I calculated with the, um, like the second camera for the sewing machine, there's something like 19 hours of um, footage. And sometimes, you know, the kids will walk out and start talking, and I just look at them so that wherever you see um that there's a break or something like that or a transition it usually means that I've made a mistake <laughs> and all the kids have come out or the postman's knocked on the door or um because I don't film at night I film during the day and um I try to do it on on particular days um my neighbors I've finally got them to all be quiet on my sewing tutorial days and and um booktube days and I just try to get as much filming that I can get done on those days. So Monday and Tuesday for me. And you'll probably have noticed that on um, Mondays and Tuesdays, there's not a lot of activity from me on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that because I'm filming. And there's not a lot of reading that gets done on those days either because by the time I finish filming, uh, I just want to lay down. <laughs> um, that's, so yeah. Monday gone was my biggest day of filming. I, I've got a lot of stuff filmed um, on that day, which was good. All right, so we're just about to put our last stitch into this. And we'll get that around. And I'm just checking to make sure that you can see that. So I'll just do a couple of little slip knots there. And then I'll just come out up the top snip that off as close as I can all right so that is another one done and I'll give that a press once I've um, finished fiddling around with it all right put that there take our sew tight off pop that there so there you go you can see there that we've got our 
row. So the ones I showed you earlier, they have the longer row at the bottom because that's the bottom of the quilt, whereas this one here, that's how it's going to go into the quilt. So they then become the top. So these actually get a little bit chopped apart. <laughs> They'll get squared off um, at this point here. So you can see here, from here to here, we'll get squared off. But I'm not going to do that now. I will wait till the whole quilt's done and it's quilted, and then I will square it off because I don't want to square it off now and then try to handle it and all that sort of stuff so i've got one more to go and i'm just going to put my all right we've been going i can't see the camera i can see the outline of myself but i can't see the camera all right so i'm just going to switch um views for you at the moment and we'll have a look at this pattern now you have seen this a bit closer so i've done these two here already and i've just worked on this one so you can see at the top here how the longer pieces and then it's only four pieces in here and a lot of it gets chopped off so you can see that a bit closer there but it's going to look fabulous when it's done all right so as I said to you I'm going to show you what the little um, diamonds look like and I'm going to wrap some fabric around as well while I'm with you today all right where are they here they are all right so we need <laughs> Where's the other packet? I um I couldn't get the other packet that we got from um the ladies at the um at the quilt show. So this is the brand that they had, which is paper pieces, and I got um and you would have seen on my floss tube I showed you where are they? They're just there now. Um the they are uh Lilabelle Lane Creations. So she has her own papers. So I got them with they're exactly the same. They're just a different brand. Like it doesn't matter what brand you get. Um, the papers are papers. They're just gonna have fabric wrapped around them. So um and they're exactly the same size. Okay, that's interesting. Oh there it is. Like it's not opening for me. So sorry about the rustling. <laughs> they are so tiny one inch insanity people insanity right there now I was going to get my dear Jane quilt out but I can't still can't get down there and we realized why it was so wet down there one of our pipes under the ground have um, has a leak so we're just waiting for the plumber to come and fix it for us it's not a fast leak or anything but it's enough to keep the moisture there and we had flooding rain here a couple of weeks ago in Kingaroy and so the ground even up the back is still really wet but it's more wet right in front of my um, storage shed where the dear Jane is so I've had a couple of people that um, I had a couple of people in the group I think it was or on Instagram somewhere I don't know anyway I had a couple of people ask that they'd be interested in seeing it so I am going to get that out as soon as I can get down there we've got a trailer sitting there at the moment as well and so we don't want to move it because it'll bog down um, and I can't get to my um, storage shed so <laughs> and I don't want to accidentally get something wet and then it go in there and go moldy so I do not want that at all and um, yeah so I'm going to get that out and I'm going to play around with that I'm slowly collecting blue fabrics because it's all going to be in blue and so I've got that's another reason that I'm going through all my stuff under the um, long arm machine all right so when we do the the diamonds now you can see here I've actually got had some um, fabric left over um, from when I done the white hexagons. So this was like a hexagons come out and it was between them. So these are probably a little bit bigger than I really need. But I do have in my little pocket here. This is great. Like even my little template. See, it's in, my little template is in there. And my thimble's in there. My needles are in there. I use the um, refills. For my glue pens, the, the glue pen refill comes in one of these and I just put all my spare pin, uh, needles in there and then it sits in there. All right, so you can see this is a lot bigger than I actually need, but this was scrap, so that's why I didn't get rid of it. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to actually draw around this. Where I don't know where my quilting pen's gone. Um, oh, there it is. I put it back in there. So I'm going to draw around this. And then I'm going to cut it because I don't know if I hang on. Can I get two out of it? Maybe. Can I get two out? No. No. All right. 
So I'm still going to have a little bit of waste. So I'm just going to um, draw around that. Maybe not. <laughs> pen doesn't want to work. Urgh. Where is my pen? I have to get some refills for my frictions. Is that better? All right, that one's dead. Put that over there so I don't pick it up again. So, yeah, so I've just drawn that there. You can see that. And then all I do is I get some scissors. You can use your embroidery scissors or whatever, but I've got my big scissors here. And I just cut roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just cut near that line. But you can see what I mean. Like that was that would have if I was just doing the hexagons and not doing these other shapes, that would have all been waste. So now I can utilize that because we have white diamonds in it and there's 18 packets of these little diamonds and they come with a hundred in them so yeah there's a few <laughs> all right so all i'm going to do is grab my glue pen and do exactly the same as what i've done with the um the hexagons and just roll that over and i'll just work my way around and I don't use a lot of glue, just a little bit. Okay, so what I will say, and I'm, I've not worked with a lot of diamonds before, but I do know that when we sew these together into the stars, your little pieces, okay, will have these little tails on them. Don't cut those tails off, okay? Just making sure you can see that. Don't cut the tails off. You definitely do not want to cut these tails off because if you cut those tails off, what will happen is you won't be able to sew a really neat, um, when you go to put them together, such as this. See how that will go underneath? And basically, just move them out of the way and then you'll be right, okay? So I'm going to continue doing some of these. I could just with my rotary cutter <laughs> but I'm a little bit scared that I'll end up doing my finger I'm, I'm a little bit um <laughs> a little bit cautious one would say when it comes to using the rotary cutter around little things after nearly losing my finger all right and then I'll just um because each star so Let's have a look here. I'll do it down here where you can see it probably a bit closer. Is it going to focus for you? Yeah. Okay. So you can see here in the picture we've got a white star and then we've got coloured stars as well. So here's probably the best place to see it. So you can see we've got the white star, then we've got the coloured star. So the white star actually has colours around it and the coloured star actually has white around it. So there's a lot of stars in this quilt and there's a lot of little white ones. And they don't take too long to, to um, sew together. But what I will do is I will just get a Ziploc bag and um, I will make sure that these are all okay, like with the glue and whatnot. And then I'll just put them in the Ziploc bags in their colours. So I think I worked out that we need like 400 and something of these of the little white ones and they're about the same. Actually, I think I wrote it in here. Because I worked it out one night. And I will leave a link down below. Um, where you can get this pattern from. Okay, so it, according to the pattern, we need um, 66 printed fabric um, stars, full stars. And then for the white stars, we need 76 so an extra 10. So that equates to 396 colored ones of these and 456 color, uh, white ones. So I've got 456 of these to do. And then 
So that's just the white stars. Then you've got also the outside of the star that is white as well. So there's more to go with it because each star has, so the colored part is six. And then when they're together, you put in another one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six colored fabric and then you'll have six white for each star. And I'll say it again. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> but when we finish doing a star, they'll be the same size as these hexagons, and then they'll be just easy to, to put together. And they don't take long. Like um, on Friday nights when we're sitting there doing it, it doesn't take long at all. We just, you just whip them up. And like this is going to be the longest because what I would normally do is I'd have a piece of fabric and then I'd just draw out all the um all the the diamonds in one go another way i've done smaller pieces as well is i get my glue and i'll put a little dollar here then i'll put my diamond down and then i'll space them all out and then i'll just grab my um scissors and cut around and roughly cut around and sometimes, you know, it, like if I'm running out of fabric, one little seam might be a little bit bigger. Uh, sorry, allowance might be a bit bigger and the other one might be slightly smaller. And that's all I really do is just go around and do that. And then I can just glue it or you can sew it. You don't have to glue it. You can sew it. But I must admit, gluing is a lot quicker. But then there's also something about the sewing of it as well. And I um, do my, when I sew my pieces together, even my um, hexagons, I, I sew on the back so I don't have to worry about pulling the threads out. They'll just stay together. And they'll just, I can still get the papers out because I don't sew through the papers. I just sew through these bits here and it's the same here. So if I was going to sew this, stitch this together, and I'll just show you what I do. Which sometimes is a lot easier. You just put the, you get your little bits of fabric, like I'll measure what I need and I'll cut the little rectangles and then I'll just sit the diamond in it. And so I put this one down first. So I would just come up with a knot in the end of my thread. Okay. And you can see there, I've just gone through, but I haven't gone through to the, see that? Yeah. So I haven't gone through to the front. And then I will just go back through to create a loop there. Okay. It's not gonna, it's not gonna focus for me. There we go. So you can see it just goes into there. And then I will just do that all the way around. So I will just go in. Come out without going through the and the same on this side. And I'm sort of just working on the top, like I'm working on the back of the, the diamond, but I'm working on the top of the fabric. And I'm just grabbing the top fabric and the one that's going the opposite direction. And I'm just not going through the cardstock. And then I get to the end and I do it again. And then this time I'll just go through like that and snip it. And then I can just snip that off. And it doesn't matter if the threads are a little bit long or anything like that. I can snip them off when I start sewing them together if I need to. But you can see there now that is together. Um, and I don't have to worry about it. So in this case, um, you know, this will, you've got all this thread on there. You want to use just a, a cheap you don't want to go and use something like bottom line that is for this spool is like $17. Um, I mean, it lasts you a long time, but you just want to use like um, a cheaper thread, not a cheap garbage thread, just a cheaper thread. So something along the lines of Birch brand, which is not a great 
thread to sew with but it's good for buttons and stuff like that so it's got a little bit of strength but when it comes time to sewing these together um basically all i need to to do is just butt them up together and it doesn't matter whether it's glued or whether it's stitched like how i just stitched it they'll butt up together and i won't have to pull out those threads that i just put in there and that's sort of the way i do it especially like i find with big stuff the glue i don't mind using glue but with some of the little stuff i've just found it very problematic and i've when i was working on the dj quilt which i've only i think i've only done four blocks two blocks three blocks i don't know i've done a couple but when i was working on that i found it really problematic to um use the glue because it was just too much glue because the pieces were too small so in that case you really do have to do the stitching way so if you are new to english paper piecing and you want to get into it and you're going to do some more like smaller stuff i would recommend that you learn both methods um and you know you can go through the card but i find going through the card is more fatigue on my fingers um so just going through the fabric on the back and not going through the cardstock doesn't fatigue my fingers as much so that's something to think about but i have been on for an hour already and um i haven't done some sewing i've done a lot of talking i've still got this to go um but i'm going to go and have some lunch because it's getting late and i've got to get this video edited and i've got to start doing some quilting so i'm going to call it a day but i will pop in again next week and do some more um stitching if i've got this one fit if i've got the hexagons finished i'll be just working on my um on my little diamonds so if you have made it this far don't forget to leave me a little uh sewing needle or a spool um emoji down below leave me a comment and tell me what you were working on while we were having a chat and if you uh have made it this far and you're new to the channel make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts and um as always don't forget to give me a thumbs up as well and maybe share my channel across the socials i would greatly appreciate that have a wonderful day everybody happy crafting and i'll see you all again next time bye for now